What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming Without Parole. Sitting across from me this week and every week, last week, the week before, probably next week. I'm just oh, dragging sorry. this whole thing out. Yeah. Uh, Desert. Hello, and sitting across from me, succinctly, is Brian Paul. Hey, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> yeah. Doing well. Fantastic. It's going well. Yes. yes. That's right, this is now our fourth week covering exclusively only PlayStation VR games. At, at some point, we're going to have to stop that. This is our 37th week covering PlayStation VR games. Yeah, I mean, once we get into double digits, maybe it'll be That's time. True. But okay. right now, it's still fairly new, and some people haven't tuned in for a while because they still think we're talking about females and video games. Hey, I, you know what? Welcome I could back. do that all day long. Mm-hmm. That would be a no- phenomenal. Hey, maybe that's a new game on the channel. New new show on the channel. Yeah. Nope. Des talks females and video games. Oh, no. Mm. There go all of our subscribers. Let your hate flow through me. Des, so first we talked about, uh, we, we've been we've been working through our, our, our launch titles of PlayStation yes. VR all the yep. way back to October 13th of 2016. Retro gaming. Retro gaming. <laughs> it's about as retro as we get these days. Yep. Uh, and, and, we, and we worked through a couple good launch games. Mm-hmm. And what game are we going to talk about this week? So we're going to get a game that um, many people may have skipped because it's free and you actually have to go kind of go get it. Um, this is... Uh, Playroom VR. Yeah, this isn't a game that they just automatically downloads when you put it on your PlayStation VR nope. headset. Uh, it doesn't. It's not on the demo disc. No, nope. uh, it's not part of VR worlds. <laughs> like there's, it has. You just have to know to go get it. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not even like advertised. If you go to the PlayStation Store, it's not like, hey, you have a VR? Try this. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really strange. And as, as a free game, I've got to say, I dragged my feet on this for a really really long mm-hmm. time. Uh, I don't think I even played it for the first time until maybe a month or two ago. Okay. And I've had my, my PlayStation VR since launch. Yeah. So that's kind of the point of this episode, is to not only um, talk about a game that we love, but also remind you that it exists. Yes. So if you're a new PlayStation VR owner, go mm-hmm. get it. If you've been playing VR and you just think it was a throwaway free game, that's this episode will hopefully disprove that. Yeah. It also brings up a point that I've kind of wanted to make, and I don't think we've... Well, I know we haven't talked about it here, and I'm not even sure you've covered it in um, uh, the Midnight Games cast. We don't really cover anything on that show. Yeah. <laughs> and that's um, one of the kind of the major problems with PSVR is the age limit. Yeah. You know, uh, according to the manufacturer's warnings, no one under the age of 12 should be using it, which is similar to all the other commercially available VR products. This is true. Uh, they're all around 12 or 13 years of age, and... In doing the research for this, uh, you know, again, I mentioned before, I have kids. Uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, well, why is that? What is the reason for the the, uh, the the age limitation? And here's the thing. There's no real research yet. There's no real definite yes or no of, is this going to be bad? Is this going to be good? So uh, we're all just assuming that Sony and Oculus and Vive, they're all just covering their ass, right? Pretty much, yeah. Um, and so the, the issue comes along. So I've got kids. They're both under 12. I've got this shiny new thing in the house. They really, really want to play with it. Yeah. What can I do? Well, this is the answer. But don't you also think that... Okay, now, you're right. This is the answer. Yeah. This is a way for, peop- for people with families or lots of friends. Uh, I don't know anything about either of those things. Um, <laughs> to, to, to be able to play VR in, in a group. Mm-hmm. Um, because the kids under 12 can all just look at the social screen holding their controller. Absolutely. Um, but don't you think... Mm-hmm. That just this just adds to the mystique for kids. Be like, be like, I want to see what Dad sees in that visor. Yeah, there is that, and um, it, it is something to have to deal with. But I think they feel better that they have at least had to have some kind of shared experience with me. Yeah. And the fact that with some of these games, the person who's watching on the social screen has a significant advantage over the person in VR. Um, you know, uh, usually, yeah. yeah. So it's it's. Yeah, it, it's not. It's certainly not. You know, the panacea to say, okay, well, the kids will play this. It's just as good as being in VR. It's not. But if you want to get them the chance, and uh, of course, not just kids, but the other people who are, you know, there at, at your home or wherever, if you want to get them involved while you're playing, it turns what's typically an isolated experience into a into a group experience. So let's talk about that for just a second. Yeah. Um, this is a free game. Mm-hmm. And also, the best multiplayer experience you can have on PlayStation VR, as far as local games, local gaming yeah, goes. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with that. A lot of other games, you know, Starblood or whatever, Farpoint, have awesome online components. But to sit in your living room with a bunch of other people, whether it be kids or your friends or whatever it is, uh, this 
this blows the competition away. Yeah. You know, like Pixel Gear has a mode. Headmaster has a mode. Mm -hmm. But this is the only game that from uh, all of its... It actually gets better the more people you add to it. Yes. No question. And and I think it's one of the only five-player games out there. For, uh, for, for VR, at least. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. So what do you think, Dad? Should we start going through these games one by one? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, how about, um, I'll, I'll start us off with, honestly, it's kind of my least favorite, but it's actually my kid's favorite one, uh, Cat and Mouse. Yeah, that's my first one, too. Yeah. Um, so in this one, you're basically the VR player is a cat, mm -hmm. and the people with the controllers are the mice. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, there's the mice are hidden under this can, and there's cheese kind of out on the floor, and there's this curtain blocking the cat from seeing. So if you are the VR player, you're seeing kind of the, the shadows through the curtain, and your goal is to stick your head through the curtain and catch the mice in the process of trying to take the cheese. And it's, it's really strange because, uh, as we mentioned, whatever you see on the social screen is much different than what you see on in the VR headset. Yeah. Um, so you're often playing these games from two different perspectives. Everyone who's looking at the social screen, all of the kids or the mice all the mice um you know they they see a screen where all the mice are running around collecting the cheese and there's like a fairly translucent curtain mm -hmm. with a cat yep. hiding behind it uh but of course your perspective from being the cat is you're from the other side of the screen mm -hmm. why is this your least favorite uh for me there's there's not a lot of variation in gameplay you're just kind of sticking your head and either you caught him or you didn't yeah you know and it, it's um no controller required. No controller required, which You're is nice. just moving your head forward, and that yep. is it. And one thing my kids absolutely loved is when you talk, the microphone takes your voice and actually, you know... Uh, yeah, makes the cat's mouth talk, move. Yeah, it makes the cat's mouth move and actually um, raises the, the, the pitch of the voice as well. So it's a oh, nice, right cute, squeaky voice. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing, you know, we haven't talked about at all, which I, I, I kind of... Um, anyways, I should have, is the design. This, this looks really, really nice. It kind of looks like Fisher Price meets PlayStation VR. Yeah, it's super cute. Like yeah. it's it, it's cutesy kind of stuff. But for what it is, it's I mean it's immersive. That everything you know what they do, of course, is kind of the same trick you played in Toy Story. Well, making things you know talk and animate is really difficult. But you know what computers can do really well? Shiny, glossy surfaces. Yeah, for real. So all, all your little all the little VR little bots, robots. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're absolutely adorable, but they have, yeah. you know, flat black screens for faces with a kind of LED light um, uh, facial features, you know, eyes, mouth, and all that. Uh, it ends up being a very cute aesthetic. So, And that follows through. So your cat isn't really, you know, a furry cat. It's just one of these VR bot cats. So, yeah, um, yeah absolute thumbs up points for, for design on this. I'm glad we started with the uh, cat and mouse because mm -hmm. cat and mouse wasn't my favorite either. Yeah. Uh, in fact, probably my least favorite. Uh, it's 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 fun as a little introduction, um, but very quickly uh, you realize there's nothing more to it. Yeah. Uh, so, since there's nothing more to it, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> what was your next one? Um, so the next one I wrote down was Wanted. Okay. Um, and it, this is basically this is one where you can have as many people playing as you want. There is no upper limit to the amount of people. You need at least two though. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, you the VR player cannot really play by themselves. I mean, you can, but you won't be very successful. Uh, actually, I tried. Oh, it, yeah. it was actually impossible. Yeah. Yep. Because, uh, well, what, again, here's what you're seeing on the two separate screens. The people who are looking at the social screen, the television, uh, they see uh, somebody's holding up a picture of the bad guy. Yeah. And it's got all these different features. And so, so it's your job to tell the person in VR who's looking at something completely different, looking at a barroom scene in the Old West, what the bad guy looks like. Right. And so, and then that person has to like go, oh, does he have a mustache? No. Does he have a cap on? No. And and you have to, you know, shoot the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, there are four different levels to this. Um, uh, and I will say... They jump up in difficulty real fast. Real fast. Yeah, because the, the first level is just like, okay, there might be three characters, and one's got a blue hat, one doesn't have a hat, and one has a red hat. Mm. So the person says, oh, the one with the red hat. Red hat. Great. You shoot the one with the red hat, you win. Uh, by the time you get to, like, sheriff level and beyond, there's, like, seven people. They all have blue hats, <laughs> and, like, maybe one has a mustache. Well, the other, it's It gets real complicated, but if you have a good team of people you're working with you kind of work with a shorthand and, and they can learn to scan and pick out the, the salient points first it's like the one with the mustache great 
Uh, and it's timed, uh, which we should you mention. You need to get through with a certain amount of time as well. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it uh, this one this one feels good. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it looks good. It's 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 a great game. Uh, and actually, do you mind if we move right along? Actually, yeah, not at all. Cool. At all. It reminds me a lot of one of my favorite ones on this list. Okay, that's Ghost House. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty much the almost the inversion of of Wanted. Yeah. Um, where you basically very Luigi, Luigi's Mansion in some ways. Very you're much. watching into this room. Your controller is now... And actually, oh, that's something we should probably talk about too. In every game except Cat and Mouse, you walk into the game and your controller turns into something. There's The, the DualShock is in the game. And, you know, in the uh, in Wanted, it turns into this really interesting, like, Gatling gun sort of Old West-themed thing. In the Ghost, it turns into a, a ghost catcher. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a Ghostbusters proton pack. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> without having to pay licensing fees. Yep. Uh, so you walk into this house, and the cool thing is, uh, you get all the little scared bots everywhere who are mm-hmm. scared of the ghost. If you're in the VR, you cannot see the ghosts. Right. People on the social screen can, and they have to tell you where they are so you can aim and shoot and capture the ghost. This is it's it's great because uh, again just like just like wanted you rely one hundred percent on mm-hmm. the communication between you and the people not in VR, and it's like when you watch somebody play. I've watched I've watched hundreds of let's plays of of, of this entire uh, playroom VR at this point just to kind of like like what did I miss this kind of stuff you yeah. know and so watching other people play is endlessly frustrating <laughs> because it's. You know, there'll be a ghost like just a little bit to the left of the TV, but sort of behind the pool table, and 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 they're and they're like, and they're trying to explain it in very poor, in very poor ways. Yeah. And like, oh, it's just to the left of the center of the screen. Well, direct center, high center, yeah. middle, yeah. and and so it's like, well, it's just it's slightly to the left of the television. It's slightly to the left, of, you know, and like so, the better you are communicating, the better the VR player is. Mm-hmm. It's it's fun, but stressful yeah. at the same time. I will say props to uh, props to my, my youngest. Uh, he actually figured out a system. I guess there are some. Again, I've only played the VR, so I haven't seen the social screen. Uh, there are some ghosts that kind of have a repeating pattern. They'll pop up behind something over and over again. So he actually figured out the timing, and he would say, "Okay, Dad, look at the oven, and one, two, now." Oh, good. And he actually got the the timing figured out, which was which was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, a little proud of the guy. Good job, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I I didn't even do that well to nope. be honest with you. Ghost Ghost House made me wish I had more friends <laughs> because because that is a game again, just like one, and you can't play by yourself. I, I was constantly when I was when I was playing yeah. alone, like ha- having the the visor out as much as possible and like lifting it. And, but the, but the game knows when you don't have your headset on, yeah. So it's constantly like blacking. Oh, it's a pain. And not only that, if you pop it out. You know, pop the lenses for, for enough so you can kind of get your eyes down there. Then you can. But then looking up, you, you look and yeah. Yeah. So it's, just get friends. Get get friends. It's, it's or if you're in Worcester, you pay someone from. Anyways. Bye. Is that how it works? We're not in the best neighborhood. <laughs> Next up is Toy Wars. Toy Wars. Oh, we're gonna go Toy Wars. Okay. Yeah. All right. Toy Wars. What do you think of to- Toy Wars? Well, here's something I want to point out too. Toy Wars wasn't with the original install of this. No, it was not. It was actually added later. So if you, you know, got your PSVR day one and uh, did a uh, uh, PlayStation, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> Playroom VR, you're like, okay, these are fun, and put it away and forgot about it. Yeah. This was an update. This was added as an update, and so you definitely want to revisit. It's it's a tower defense game, kind of. Well, sort of. But all you're doing is uh, is you are a one-man turret. Yes. Right? I yeah. mean, of course, there are many turrets, depending on how many people you're playing with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're playing, you're defending uh, a kid's room yep. against a bunch of enemies that are basically made up of giant voxels. Yes. Uh, and you're, But actually, the other players with the DualShock, they are actually mechs. Like, uh, the central, fight, central person is, is shooting around, is, is the... The gun turret, but the mechs can go in and actually try and block and stop the monsters before they get the turret. And this is one I should have played with other people. Yeah, because I had no idea. That's an, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So the, and each of the um, each of the robots, depending on which controller you use um, or which one you end up being, has a different sort of power they can use. Nice. So it, it definitely adds something uh, to it there. I, one thing I really like. It's funny. Just last week we were talking about okay, does doesn't really get scared in games you know um and i'm not saying i get scared but this is the first time even after playing ancient emulator where also like there was you know a villain like 
way up, uh, you know, towering over me, about to kill me. Like, oh crap! You know, <laughs> and it was it was. I think it was neat. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not super challenging. I'll, I'll be the first to admit. Um, you can, I mean, once you sort of get an idea for the the pacing of the game, you can probably beat it your first time through, no question. Which uh, is very good to hear because I actually thought that this was extremely difficult because I was playing it by myself. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I need some friends. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is hard. Uh, I'm not going to say it's not, but you know, all the other games we've talked about so far have been very, let's say, skill independent. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Which is a nice way to put it. You know, you can pretty much have anyone play these games and not get destroyed totally. This one it can get pretty challenging, and you're going to move pretty quickly. Uh, you have to kind of shift around your, your your ideas. But again, just you know, it, it's simple graphics, just the voxels. But as these creatures come up, you know, and they're towering over you, they do pretty good jobs. There are some, like, little slithering ones. So you're so focused on this big guy here, you look down, and uh, because of the perspective, you are kind of on the ground in the toy room. Yeah, real small. Real small. These things tower over you once they get close. It's really immersive, and I, I liked it. And, uh, and as you mentioned, the, the, the robots mm-hmm. are super cute yes and yep. and they're all they're all behind you and they're all cowering in fear of like the you know impending yep. doom from the from the attackers uh, it is kind of cool though because i think you can tell this was the last one added because if you do uh once you finish it if you do beat the level you can turn around and it's every character from every game in the, in the collection is kind of there celebrating and yeah very nice and your gun turns into a confetti cannon which is cute <laughs> Um, that leads well, us to Monster Escape. Monster Escape, yes. This one's interesting. Yeah, before um, before I played Toy Wars, which I actually just played for the first time today, uh, Ro- the uh, Monster Escape was probably my favorite kind of social one. Yeah, me. same here. Yeah. Uh, if you're, this is basically Godzilla destroying mm-hmm. a city, uh, and the person in VR is Godzilla. Yeah. They do pull the same trick with the voice changer, which is kind of cute. But of course, if you're this huge monster trying to tower and destroy a town having a high-pitched squeaky voice is either well actually it's awesome <laughs> depends on what your definition of scary is i suppose yeah 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 um yeah as the as the vr where you are the rope the uh, the monster the the lizard whatever the godzilla the godzilla and you're supposed to, you're going through the city destroying buildings how do you destroy buildings you whack them with your head yeah yeah this is a godzilla that doesn't have arms or radioactive breath and the buildings are blowing up as you destroy them, and pieces of them are falling down in front of you, uh, with <clears throat> landing on the other people that are playing with you. Um, the uh, <laughs> what the hell are they? Well, so the, the, the little mini bots, um, little robots, uh, little robots. Again, they have you know, four different colors: green, blue, red, whatever. Uh, their job is to go around and save or collect up all the little citizens or the other mini bots or the yeah. VR bots. In the city, and so as they go along and grab onto a citizen, they make a chain behind them. Right. But their job is also they need to keep all those safe. So as you smash a building with your head, the debris falls down, and they get a little warning saying, "Hey, you know, little skull and crossbones, don't be standing here in a second and they have to get through there. Um, so that's the first section of the game. Yeah, and then it, then it moves to something that's well very different, basically, mm-hmm. um, and, and it's. And it's it, the the tables are turned, I guess. Yes. Because at the at the end, you're sort of stuck in one place as the as the Godzilla monster, and then all the little robots are getting supplies dropped in from uh, from from a little supply plane that mm-hmm. keeps flying by and throwing all sorts of junk. And so you pick up the junk and you throw it at the monster. Yep. So it's your job now, instead of headbutting the buildings, yep. to dodge the attacks. Absolutely. This is definitely one of those games you want to make sure you've got a lot of clearance because before you know it, you're knocking down the spider plant again and your wife is yelling at you. Yeah, and if there are people sitting next to you on the couch playing along, you're, <laughs> you're going to headbutt them, whether you're headbutting buildings or, you know, avoiding avoiding stuff being thrown at your head. Yeah, I did have to keep telling my son to, no, you can't stand in front of me because I cannot see you. Right. Just because you can see me doesn't mean I can see you. Yeah. Um, what is nice is actually... During the loading screens and all that, you can um, it shows you where the DualShock controller is, like yeah. most of the VR games do. So I could tell when he hits snuck in front of me because <laughs> the controller was. It's like no, or right, we'll move over to the side there. Nice. Um, 
But yeah, and this is, you know, it's definitely one of those ones where the people with the social screen have a huge advantage, especially if there's more than one of them. I, I it, It's hard enough just dodging, you know, I only had the one controller at the time, so we can only do one-on-one. -on -one. That was hard enough. I can't imagine if there's three or four of them lobbing stuff at you. That's got to be near impossible. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And, and, the, and the fact is, is again, it's it's another game about communication. Mm -hmm. You know, so like if there's, if you get two or three people, you know, lobbing stuff at the monster, then if you just, if there's one person throwing stuff at a, at a time, then it's easy to dodge. But if both people are throwing things at the same time, well, then there's less of a margin for mm -hmm. error. You like don't know where to go if two things are coming at you mm -hmm. at the same time. Now, there's still two more things I want to talk about as yeah. far as this game's concerned. But before we do, okay. something we should probably mention is that after every game you play, oh, right. the PlayStation camera decides to take a picture of you. Now, this was a super popular thing back on the PlayStation Move days, mm -hmm. on the PlayStation 3. Um, for some, I've got all these really stupid pictures of me and my dad playing Start the Party. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, all sorts of awful, awful games. Yeah. I pet. This was the most popular part of the game with my kids. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so what? So each photograph that gets taken mm -hmm. has a theme, yes. right? Taken from the mini game that you were just playing. Mm -hmm. So, what? I mean, why did your kids love it so much? They just, I mean, they're, they're kids. They want to be in front of a camera, like hand I, it up. Right? Yeah, I would be playing with my son, and like uh, my daughter would hear that the the camera part was coming, and she'd just be running in from the next room and. <laughs> you know, throw herself uh, in, in the picture, and of course they would be. You know, like the um, the, the the cat and mouse. I think in the picture there, there's a big pile of cheese that's falling. So you know, my sub would be You're trying to aiming himself into the, the cheese. cheese. And of course, you know, I held my uh, the dual shot controller like a gun into the screen for the, the Wild West one. So yeah. So it's it's fun. The first time I played this game, um, I'm not a not a social person. Mm -hmm. When I when I play games, I don't I don't uh, I don't advertise that I got a trophy. Uh, I, I don't I don't publish these things on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I, I I keep all that stuff very private. So the first time I was checking this out by myself, I'm sitting there in my underwear on the couch, <laughs> right? And and the PlayStation camera is like, we're gonna take a picture of you, and I was like, no, you're no, you not. Aren't. <laughs> and it's like, yes, we are, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> like just me in my underwear, just like, uh, and I was like, I was like, I don't, I hope it doesn't just automatically post to Facebook or something yeah, like I hope that. Not. <laughs> uh, so I had definitely had to check my settings to make sure yeah. that was okay. Um, but yeah, it is with people in the room and stuff and fully clothed. It's a lot more fun, and uh, oh. well, it doesn't have to be fully clothed. It depends <laughs> what kind of party you're having, doesn't it? But the last game, yes, last actual game, mm -hmm. I think is the best part of this collection. Oh yeah, no question. And it's called Robots Rescue. Yeah. Uh, this so uh, a few episodes ago we talked about Mervils. I, I knew, I knew without like yeah. whenever somebody says the word Mervils, I just want to punch him in the face. I'm like, leave Mervils alone. Yeah, leave Mervils alone. Mervils is a great game. Go ahead, Des. Go this, ahead. shit this, on Mervils. Well, I'm not gonna shit on Mervils. You're gonna shit on Mervils. What, what I am gonna say is this game validates my criticisms of Mervils. You just shit on Mervils. I I didn't. I said you know one of my biggest criticisms was. There, there was a lot of fun in there. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, joy, but it doesn't look great. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, say all you want about the gameplay and the humor and whatnot, it just doesn't look good. Okay. Robots Rescue mm -hmm. looks fantastic. Amazing. Right? It yeah. looks like an N64 rare game. Well, yeah. But, you know, yeah. but good. Yeah, yeah. Right, because N64 was a long time ago. It has, like, that cute cartoony style and everything mm -hmm. looks really nice. You can't control the camera. This is not an open world or open level kind of right. game. It is very Crash Bandicoot in style. Yes. Right? So you can move forward and you can move backwards. Mm -hmm. And even when you move backwards towards the camera, towards the VR headset, it takes a while. You have to, like, run toward and, like, wait for the camera to slowly yeah. back up. So graphically... When you put something on a track like that, instead mm -hmm. of like allowing there to be a big open level, I think you get a little more horsepower behind your game. Sure. But I will agree with you that if Marvels looked this good, I don't think anyone would complain about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think it would be uh, one of the biggest hits of the thing. If, if Yeah, if they put that much polish behind it, no question. My, my criticisms would phew, disappear. But what is Robots Rescue? Uh, yeah, and the other thing we should clarify, when you say you're moving, you're basically this godlike robot who's controlling a tiny little bot mm -hmm. who's going around and rescuing other mini-bots that are hidden. I, I keep saying mini-bots, but actually I think VR bot is the actual. Oh, is that what it is? is? I think so. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you're controlling and basically telling this little mini-bot where to... Ah! This little VR bot where to go to rescue the other things. And of course, you can see... 
you know, be, from your godlike perspective, you can see where some of them are hiding. Um, and of course, if you have some assistants who are playing uh, as their own little VR bots, they can see things that you can't, or more importantly, access areas that you can't. Right. Uh, the great thing about this is, um, again, not only are the, the VR bots adorable, mm -hmm. but uh, the combat is simple. The, uh, the, the controls feel great. Yep. This, is, this is a standard third-person platformer. But the thing that really got me on this was that the motion controls are amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. With your DualShock 4, you use the touchpad to shoot out basically, I'll call it a grappling hook. Yeah. Yep. And you create kind of a tightrope for your little robot to walk on. So you're holding the end of the tightrope basically with your DualShock 4. And you you know, you use the analog stick and the jump button to get your little robot up on the tightrope. And then you can move that tightrope wherever you want it to. Mm -hmm. Or you can toss it up in the air and make your robot do a little jump. Yep. You know, get them up to higher places where you couldn't access before. It just feels perfect. Mm -hmm. Like somebody finally got motion controls right. Yeah. And I'll say, like, one of the biggest, as excited as I am about this, one of the biggest disappointments about playroom vr is it's over before it even begins um yeah you know, if my gosh if they made a full game of just robot rescue mm -hmm. they could charge just about whatever they wanted i mean i i would gladly pay for a full version of robots rescue no question about it yeah this this should have been a 60 level game yeah uh this i mean obviously the playroom is free Yes. So, you know, if, if maybe we get enough people to say, give us robots, rescue, <laughs> full game. But yeah. yeah, this is literally one level. And uh, in it, I just, I played this one level numerous times. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, every time you finish, all you want to do is play again. Yeah, um, that's, and that's what's frustrating. It's such a great gaming experience from top to bottom. You get to the end and you're like, oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. And it kind of, which, which is kind of... Uh, counterintuitive but it loses some points because you enjoy it so much and it's just oh it's over I always leave yeah. them wanting more does apparently yeah there well there is a limit to that yeah <laughs> um you should finish the show first well yeah. but as one of what six games yeah i can't yeah. no complaints here this is this is phenomenal and with any luck maybe one day we'll get robots rescue playstation vr proper um there's one last experience I guess is worth talking about. Uh, if what do you mean you guess is worth talking about? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my God. This totally brought out the collector in me big time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If you're the collector type or the completionist, this is going to be your crack. Yeah. Um, it's uh, what's called the mini bots. It's called the mini bots. It's basically a toy room. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you are you 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 get coins. We didn't even talk about this, but oh, right. the yeah. more you play each of the other mini games, you win tokens. Right. And you use those tokens in the mini bots toy room in a claw machine and yeah. it's <laughs> and you can in if you're good enough i don't think it takes too much work you can yeah. sort of pick which which uh which which little plastic bubble the claw picks up right and then what happens um then what happens unlike let's say oh super smash brothers uh smash brothers melee i think had basically the same idea you got coins you got little instead of just like sitting there looking oh look at the treasure i got right um, once you've put the claw machine away, it turns into this playset. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, each each one of those plastic bubbles has a little figurine or an arcade machine or some or some weights for a gym or mm -hmm. like I mean just like infinite not an infinite number but yeah. a ridiculous number of little things that all have their place in this. I'd almost want to call it a diorama or glorified yeah. dollhouse. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's a playset. If you look, you know, perfect playset. Yeah, my, my my son has tons of these things where all the little characters play around, and they're animated, and some of them are interactive. Yeah. Uh, so one there there is some fun to be had. You know, looking around like, oh, can I just watch that one? Oh, like there is the helicopter, which I found out you can actually um, blow on it. It'll start to take off, and if you get yourself under it, you can keep blowing. And uh, have it take off. I don't even have the helicopter. Yeah, and then uh, I think you actually, I have a hundred things, and I don't have all of them yet. Not even by there's an achievement or there's a trophy for that. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're a trophy hunter, there is tons of trophies built into this. I think there's even a platinum. Um, if I remember, I mean, there correctly. should be because yeah. there's a lot to do in this game. Yeah, and uh, some of the trophies are really easy. Some are insanely difficult to find. I'll, I'll leave it to you to go search up your yeah. FAQs to find those. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I I was so addicted to just getting all of the little plastic bubbles with all the little <laughs> toys because I just wanted to I just wanted my entire little playroom 
to to be decked out with yeah. all the coolest stuff. And anytime I saw something for the arcade, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, I got to get that one." <laughs> right? Because you can look in there and kind of and kind of yeah. see what's still available. Oh, what's the God of War one? Did you see it? I don't think oh, so. No, there's some little pun. I forgot what it was called. Oh gosh! But basically, it's a it's a God of War cabinet, and it's got this punny little name. Um, one, just I, one of them was called the Dude Raider, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't know the God of War one though. Yeah, I think of like God of VR maybe or something like that. I definitely don't have all the all the little things, and I want all the little things. All the little things. Des, so what we've been doing mm-hmm. at the end of each of these videos, yes, is uh, is is Say ranking goodbye. it on a on a on a three rank yeah basis three level scale three level scale and yeah, this game kind of breaks their our scale because you know it, it was basically one go buy it now two meh if it's on sale pick it up if not no biggie or three friends don't let friends buy crap uh, this is free so it kind of it's a no brainer yeah yeah um, you, if you're looking for like the intense gaming experience there's not a lot of depth to any of these games um Nope. I mean, if you really like, oh, I want to play all these games and, and beat them, uh, I don't know. Do you think it'd even take two hours? Probably not. No. Nope. I, um, and especially if you're trying to do it by yourself. Maybe. Impossible. <laughs> yeah, if, if you've got other people with you. Right. This you is know. this is absolutely a game that you need some friends to play with. Mm-hmm. And, and if you have some friends over and maybe you're having a few drinks. Uh, and uh, VR probably isn't the best thing to do while drinking. So... <laughs> So that, that this is a great way to have um, to have fun and have yeah. most of the people playing not be in VR. Let your designated driver actually have more fun than everyone else for once. <laughs> that How makes a that? lot of sense, actually. Uh, so, so the deal is, is that I was about one hundred percent done with an actual without parole games review mm-hmm. of the of uh, of the the what's this called the playroom VR. Playroom VR. What, what is wrong with me today? It's it's a weird name. I've been sitting and you know, I've also been sitting in front of a computer for the last 18 hours yeah. straight. So oh, I apologize to everyone for this uh <laughs> for my inability to communicate today. But I my final paragraph of my official review which never got published because I wanted this to happen instead was props to Sony. Mm-hmm. because they absolutely could have charged $20 for this. It could have been one of those day one purchases for, for PlayStation VR right out of the gate, and, they, and I, I don't think any would have, anyone would, ever would have complained about spending $20 on this. I don't know. If it was 20 bucks, I think it would have been a meh for me. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of fun to be had, but it's, it's short fun. It's not even, I mean, pick a Mario Party game. There's a lot more game there, Yeah. you know. Mario Party games are also two and a half times as expensive as this. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But that's, so that was sort of my final verdict in the review. Where I said if, it was, if they charged $20, I certainly would be just as happy to play all these games with all my non-existent friends. So absolutely download it. No questions asked. Yeah. That's yeah. my verdict. No, this, this, it's not a question. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I guess unless you don't have enough space, maybe. But delete some of the crap that you don't need anymore and yeah. get this instead. There's no reason not to. Space, yeah. irregardless. you got your shiny new toy. You've got friends over. You know what? Maybe not all of them are going to be able to handle, let's say, oh, I don't know, Star Blood Arena. Did I say irregardless? Irregardless. That's not a word. Yeah, it's a very cromulent word. Um, but, you know, this is a game that even people who don't want to try on the, the headset and don't want to, you know, risk whatever they can get involved they can play if you got again if you got kids this is something you can do with kids with the the playstation vr yeah it's it's there's really no way to lose with this right on yeah all right so again as always make sure you comment below let us know what games you want us to talk about next week although we've already got that figured out let us know what games you want us to talk about the week after that uh we're We're sticking with (laughs) we're sticking (laughs) with the launch games for as far as we can tell because there was a good handful of launch games uh right off the bat some of them there's not a lot to say about so we might not do episodes of all of them (laughs) but yeah let us know let us know what you think let us know what you think of the vr playroom playroom vr i always get it backwards gaming without pearl i'm brian paul I'm Desra, and we'll see you next week.